is Hannah Hayes, and I'm a high schooler from Iowa. You said earlier today that transitioning to renewable energy has the people and capital to support it. So with enough investment in renewables, the development of energy storage technology to soon meet Iowa's energy needs, and support from the government system through Inflation Reduction Act funding, why hasn't Berkshire Hathaway Energy truly invested in the future by accelerating retirement plans for the coal plants, which have high operating costs and are currently Iowa's biggest carbon polluter and will continue to be until they're finally retired in 2049, which is too late to be curbing emissions, according to the IPCC? Yeah, it's very interesting. We, we uh, in Iowa... We have actually produced more uh, wind energy than is used, uh, the total amount of energy used by our, our customers, but it's not, it's not producible 24 hours a day necessarily. So the, there's problems. And incidentally, in, in Iowa, a, a significant majority of Counties welcome us when we come around and want to put in wind, and some don't want it. I mean, it, it you know, it is, it is a, there's a not in my backyard someplace. There's other places where they love the money they get from a small plot of ground, and, and people, in the, they like the taxes that are paid. But I would say that if there's one state in the union that stands out in the development, uh, it's... It's Iowa, but what's also interesting in Iowa is that we have one other major company. There's always loads of little co-ops and all kinds of things that sell electricity. But we have one major competitor, and uh, our prices are uh, significantly lower. And as a matter of fact, we are now in the Omaha Public Power District, and three miles or four miles away, we're selling electricity in Iowa. And we are selling it cheaper, even though public power was invented in Nebraska and has been a, uh, I think it's, you know, George Norris did it back in the 1930s. And, you know, it's, it, uh, it's, Nebraska's resisted to some extent uh, wind power uh, more than Iowa, but like I said, our competitor, or alternate source hasn't really pursued it the way we have. But I would, I would say that our record in wind and solar uh, has not been topped by any utility in the United States. And of course, it's been aided by the fact that most utilities pay out 70 or 80 percent of earnings and dividends. And uh, uh, we haven't taken a common dividend out of, we had a little tiny preferred we haven't taken a common dividend out of it, you know, for 20 years. We reinvested, I don't know how many billion. That's the reason why the earnings have gone from 200 million to 4 billion. But we're not earning a higher rate of return on capital than we were when we started. We just put way more capital into the business as we went along, kept reinvesting the capital. So I wish Greg were here to tell you more details about it. But but uh, but uh, I would say that. We'd put up, we'd really put a Berkshire Hathaway Energy's record against any utility in the United States. Charlie, you, you've watched it. Well, I have, and uh, I'm not personally at all sure how bad the global warming is going to be. I think, I don't think anybody knows for sure whether the seas are going to rise two inches or 20 feet. And so I think there's a lot of false claims here in a world where much is not known. Yeah, we, Wyoming, there is a lot of wind in Wyoming, and we are building transmission lines that, that extend out through the West. But uh, it was World War II, and they told us to do it, and somebody, and we had a czar, and in Washington, I could say, you know, just get it done. Like I said to Henry Kaiser on building ships, you know, you can't believe how far ahead we would be down from 
where we are, but we've got the money, we've got the know-how, and we do spend about, this year, our depreciation in our utility companies on the order of $4 billion, and we spend maybe $3 billion additional, left. so maybe we spend $7 billion, and, uh, and there are very few companies in the, in the utility industry that are spending you know, that percentage of their depreciation. But we'd love to be spending more, but there are people, there are people all over that <laughs> don't want, they don't want the pipeline to go through there, or they don't want the, the, the tower, whatever it may be. And uh, that is the problem of a democracy. And, and even, as I mentioned, within Iowa, you've got a great many counties that, majority, great majority of the counties, I think, but welcome the uh, wind power, and you've got some counties that don't like it. And we're obviously going to work with the ones that, that want to work with us. We do not have the ability to go in and, and tell anybody what to do on that. And, uh, and there's a public utility commission in every state uh, that basically governs what we earn on it, what we do, and that's the way the industry is developed. And that's not bad and, unless you get into things that that, in effect, uh, you know, extend their part of a countrywide system rather than a statewide system. I think also that even if we weren't worried about global warming, it would make sense to oh, sure. shift to renewables to conserve our hydrocarbons. There are certain things hydrocarbons can do that nothing else can do, and there are only so much of them there. Why not be cautious in conserving them? And the, and the cost, they've so, gotten so much more efficient, too. I mean, the, the, the wind stuff. I mean, if you look at what we're doing now, uh, those towers are way more efficient. And, and, but there's a lot, of, a lot of people that are t talking uh, that uh, they're talking about things that can't be done. And then there's, there's, a, there's a lot of nonsense in this field. Yeah, you know. If you like nonsense, this is the field for you. Oh. <laughs>